Hello and welcome to A Beginner's Guide to RuneScape in 2021. Now, to start with, I'm going to say that it's impossible to cover every aspect of RuneScape in one video. The game is about 20 years old now, and absolutely massive. Not only that, but there's both RuneScape 3 and Old School RuneScape, each of which has unique content, and despite being ostensibly the same game, feel and play very differently at this point. RuneScape is a free-to-play game and you can play for as long as you want, completely for free. There are numerous free-to-play areas, free-to-play quests, and free-to-play skills, and the nice thing about RuneScape is you can play them to your heart's content. In that regard, it is much like a game such as Path of Exile. But if you're going to keep playing the game, you will eventually want to get membership. Membership unlocks new areas, new skills, and way more ways to use the skills that you already had. Membership takes the form of a monthly subscription, but you can also use in-game gold through an item called a bond to purchase membership. One bond will get you 14 days of membership and seems to be hovering between 20 and 25 mil. If you want to know more about how to make the money to earn a bond, then check out my video in the card and description below talking about that. So the first decision that you have to make when starting RuneScape is do you play RuneScape 3 or do you play Old School RuneScape? Old School RuneScape is a community-driven version of the game, officially made by Jagex, based off of how RuneScape 2 was around 2007. Now keep in mind that you can freely transfer between either one, and membership on one will carry over to the other because membership is applied to your account, not to your character. However, your exact character will not transfer over, so even if you're maxed in RuneScape 3, you'll be a fresh level 1 in every skill if you started Old School RuneScape. And the games are quite different. I would say that they, in many ways, appeal to a fairly different audience. So here are some pros and some cons for each version of the game, starting with RuneScape 3. RuneScape 3 has a lot more quality of life and a lot more AFK training options, which leads to faster progression and easier entry into the endgame, as opposed to old school RuneScape. RuneScape 3 also looks a lot newer, the graphics are a lot better, and there are far more detailed textures. If you're feeling a bit lost or intimidated by the game, then the paths give you a nice sense of direction. They kind of hold your hand and tell you go here, go there, do this, etc. But don't worry, if at any time you want to get off the path, you want to just do your own thing, then you can just stop following it. There's no penalty and no harm done. RuneScape 3 also has several new and reworked skills, including mining and smithing, which are way more interesting and engaging than they used to be. The combat itself was also redesigned and is more like what you'd find in a traditional MMO rather than the very old click and wait style of combat that old school uses. And finally, there are more options for PVM or PVE, i.e. player versus monster or player versus environment in RuneScape 3. And the PVM system in RuneScape 3 does feel a bit more polished than old school. But RuneScape 3 is not perfect. It also has some cons, and the first really big con is Treasure Hunter. Treasure Hunter is a really garbage microtransaction system that has no place in RuneScape. It's basically loot box gambling, except it gives you free keys for doing things in the game, and then annoyingly tells you you need to use them, or they're going to clog your inventory, or you can just destroy them, which I have done several times out of spite at this point, because the whole damn system is really annoying. Some people argue that this is straight up pay to win, because if you spend to the tune of about 20,000 US dollars, you can max out all of your skills through this system, I think the cost is pretty absurd and that you're better off just not skipping the entire game of RuneScape at the cost of 20 grand, but needless to say, this is a big con. The UI can also be overwhelming. Once you're used to it and once you've customized it just the way you like it, then it's actually pretty good and it certainly lets you do a lot of things. But to start with, it's overwhelming. There's boxes and windows and stuff everywhere. Personally, I like the legacy UI because that simplifies it down. It does come somewhat at the cost of customization, but I'm okay with that. And then finally, because progression is easier, and because there are more options to train skills via minigames, or in some cases buy them outright, some people say that RuneScape 3 isn't as rewarding, that you don't struggle as much to max out your skills. And this really comes down to personal preference. But if you really like everything about RuneScape 3 and you want to make it a little bit more challenging, you can choose Iron Man or Hardcore Iron Man mode where you will be restricted from trading. You must do everything yourself. And if you picked Hardcore Iron Man mode, you can only die once. If you die, you'll lose all the items that your character was carrying, and you will be exited out of Hardcore Iron Man. 
So like with some of the other cons on this list, while there are elements that aren't perfect, there are usually things that help alleviate the problem. So what about old school RuneScape? One of the pros of old school RuneScape is both the UI and the gameplay is nice and simple. A lot of it is click to move, point and click, and you're good to go. Another advantage of old school RuneScape is it has a higher player base and there seem to be more people joining the game, especially these days, though that could in part be due to the mobile launch. Third of all, if you're at all nostalgic about the RuneScape 2 days, and especially if you enjoyed the 2005 to 2007 version of RuneScape 2, then Old School RuneScape is an incredibly faithful reproduction of that game. They also take player feedback and community feedback in by doing polls to determine if a new proposed update gets added to the game or not. So if you really want to feel like you have a voice in the community, and the devs don't put something in that you are totally against, or you're just feeling nostalgic for the good old RuneScape 2 days, then OSRS is most certainly for you. Next up, there is a far more active PvP community in OSRS. So if you like killing players, and you want more players to kill, you want more people in the wilderness, and you want that sense of present danger, OSRS is definitely for you more than RS3. I've gone into the wilderness quite a few times recently on RS3, and I saw nobody, which means that it is far less dangerous, and if you're chasing some adrenaline, you're not really going to get it so easily. RS3 does have PvP worlds, but again, if you're looking for PvP, I would recommend OSRS. And then the last pro is slower and more meaningful progression. It's not going to be fast to level the skills. It's going to take you a long time, and you're going to do a lot of grinding, but it is going to feel super meaningful when you finally hit that 99. So if you're looking for a long-term sense of progression, I would very much recommend OSRS. And now, what about the cons? Well, the first is that OSRS can be much more click-intensive. So if you do plan to play it over a long period of time, make sure to take breaks to avoid developing RSI. There aren't as many of the quality of life features and automation and AFKing that RS3 offers, although there are some. You no longer have to, for example, click every single time that you string a bow, you can string X, which does definitely help. Next up, because OSRS has more players, there's more competition for limited resources. You might have to hop worlds more, or during peak times, some really high demand monsters and other resources might be unavailable at all unless you're willing to fight with players to click faster, do more damage, etc. And finally, the graphics are more outdated. If you can't stand early 2000s graphics, and you can't stand slightly clunkier gameplay and pathing, play RuneScape 3. Don't play OSRS you'll just be needlessly frustrated and driven away from a game that you might have otherwise enjoyed. So my overall recommendation at this point is, if you're looking for a more casual experience, or if you're looking more to skill and play minigames, play RuneScape 3. If you're looking for more of a hardcore experience, or you're really into PvP, then go with OSRS. Also, if you do plan to play OSRS, I very much suggest the third-party client, RuneLite, which will be down in the description below. It has a bunch of handy plugins that are super good for quality of life and make it easier to do some of the more annoying tasks like remembering the clue scrolls for treasure trails. So now that you've decided on which version of RuneScape you want to try out, what can you do in the game? There are a ton of different activities and there's an impressive amount of diversity. There's so many MMOs these days that claim to be every game in one. Well, the truth of the matter is that they're about 20 years late to the party because RuneScape is, in many ways, dozens of other games all in one. The first example of something that you can do in RuneScape is skilling. Skilling is the term the community uses for raising the level of a skill, usually non-combat skills. There's a lot of different skills you can level, including some that are exclusive to RuneScape 3. One of the coolest things about RuneScape is all of the skills are interrelated. So let's say you want to use the rage skill and kill some monsters but you want to really make your own bow and arrow. Well, to do that, you're going to need the fletching skill. The fletching skill makes bows and arrows. But that won't be the only skill you're using. To make the bowstring for your bow, you'll need the crafting skill. To make the heads for your arrows, you're going to need the smithing skill. And to get those logs that you're fletching into arrow shafts or bow limbs, you're going to need the woodcutting skill. Because of the way that all the different skills combine, it helps to keep even low-level materials very profitable which means even from an early point, you're able to make money while leveling your skills. This is especially the case in RuneScape 3, as the invention skill uses massive amounts of raw materials generated by all the other skills. 
And if the default method of training the skill is a bit boring to you, there are plenty of mini games, which let you train skills in different ways. A good example of this would be the Rune Span. The Rune Span is a RuneScape 3 minigame that's an alternative to the runecrafting skill. Normally to train runecrafting, you would have to carry some rune essence or pure rune essence over to an altar, enter the altar, craft the runes, run back to the bank, and then repeat the process until you die of boredom. If the skill hadn't been so profitable, I'm not sure anyone would have trained it back in the day, as it took truly a masochist to appreciate it. In the rune span, you are harvesting runes from various runic creatures or from various runic anomalies. You don't get to keep these runes, they are property of the rune crafting guild who discovered this place, but you're able to train the skill in a far more AFKable manner, and in my opinion, a far more enjoyable way. Another example of a minigame that I mentioned earlier were the treasure trails. The treasure trails are a series of clue scrolls that you have to solve, going to various locations, all around Jelenor, and at the end you dig up a treasure and receive a reward. This reward is pretty random, but it can often be quite valuable. Of course, not everything is about non-combat skills and Care Bear exploration. Sometimes you just want to kill stuff. And combat in RuneScape works a bit differently. Combat is divided into melee, range, and magic, with adjacent skills like HP, or constitution, which does exactly what you'd think, defense, which lets you use better armor, prayer, which gives you a bunch of in-combat buffs and debuffs, and slayer, which lets you face new enemies with better drops. In RuneScape 3, there's also summoning, where you can summon familiars, which have combat and utility effects. Unlike most games where you pick a class and you get a bunch of skills associated with that class, in RuneScape, you can use any type of combat you want, or any items for that type of combat, provided at least that you have the level to equip them. It may not be a good idea to try to cast magic in full plate, as it does give you a penalty to your magic attack stat, lowering your accuracy and making your spells more likely to splash against enemies harmlessly, but if you are really determined, or maybe you just don't like getting beat up by that annoying ranger, you can do it. The game uses a relatively soft trinity system, where melee counters ranged, range counters magic, and magic counters melee. But again, there's lots of item variation, and this is not a hard and fast rule. You can mix and match pieces to get your bonuses to an acceptable place, and there's some neat things you can do as a result. If you don't like the type of combat you're doing, switching it up is as simple as changing your gear, putting on some new stuff, and have at it. In old school RuneScape, different weapons have different special abilities, such as the infamous Dragon Dagger, which is often used to PK or player kill due to its relatively low cost and efficient double strike. Meanwhile, in RuneScape 3, your combat styles grant you unique abilities, which is a little bit more like a traditional MMO. You can use each of these abilities manually to really optimize your DPS rotation, or have them trigger automatically with the revolution system. Both RS3 and Old School RuneScape have lots of different and unique endgame bosses which you can tackle either solo or in a group, and these bosses have their own signature rewards. Though if you want to fight them, you may need some slayer levels or some quest completion. Which brings me to quests in RuneScape. Now in a lot of MMOs, quests are kill five wolves, good job, now kill seven bigger wolves, and that sort of deal. If you're looking for that, that would be the Slayer skill in RuneScape. No, no, no. Quests are far more D&D in nature, requiring you to talk to people, apply critical thinking, and explore your surroundings. You will very often have to bring people specific items, or look in that creepy dark hole and find out that there's a monster in there, kill it, come out, save the town, and be a hero. At least a local one. I also personally appreciate the fact that the player character is not usually portrayed as a completely idiotic goody two-shoes who trusts the bandits are well-meaning when they say they're lost in the woods and need help, and totally don't look like they're leading you into a trap. In general, for RuneScape questing, you'll need a wide array of both combat and non-combat skills to complete them, but it can be well worth it as quests often unlock new ways to do things, new items, new enemies to fight, and sometimes entire new game areas, such as Tyranwyn, the Land of the Elves. On the other hand, if buying and selling things are more your deal, RuneScape 3 and Old School RuneScape have a vibrant player-driven economy. Now, a lot of games claim to have a player-driven economy, and it basically boils down to buying and selling one or two items occasionally. But no, RuneScape truly does have a vibrant player-driven economy, with items fluctuating consistently based on supply and demand, 
Because everything between the game's skilling and resource systems are so interconnected, resources really do matter. Which means, very often, making money is as simple as gathering almost anything in the game. Leveling up woodcutting or fishing? Well, that's going to make you money. Killing monsters? Well, that's going to make you money. It will of course vary, and in general there are going to be some things that are in higher demand and other things that are going to be in lower demand. But if trading is your deal, then get to the Grand Exchange and start flipping, as it is very possible to make ungodly sums of money just by buying items from players at a low price and selling them to other players at a higher price. If you are curious about flipping and you like money, then you can check out my Introduction to Flipping Guide, which will be in the card and again in the description below. It's really easy to get overwhelmed when starting RuneScape, because there are so many options. It's easy to look at RuneScape as a beautiful 10-layer cake that's absolutely delicious. And you want to eat the entire thing whole, but you know it definitely won't fit in your mouth, and even if it did, you'd be very sick after. So it's best to break it down, cut yourself off a tiny slice of your favorite flavor, and dive in. Then, when you finish that, take another slice. So, as you start, don't worry too much about the endgame, min-maxing, or optimization. Just jump into whatever you find fun. If there's a tree over there and you want to cut it down, eh, go cut it down. If you want to light those logs on fire, light them on fire. Maybe you got lost in the Lumbridge Swamp and decided to kill some rats. Then, kill those rats. Whatever experience you're getting for your combat will help you later. And, on the note of combat, one quick new player tip is to remember that while you don't have to use a specific combat style against a specific enemy in most cases, most enemies will be weak to a certain combat style. In RuneScape 3, this is usually just split above their head. In Old School RuneScape, you might have to hear about it from a Slayer Master, or you might have to look on the wiki. The wikis for both RuneScape 3 and Old School RuneScape are invaluable resources. You should refer to them as much as possible. RuneScape 3 has an especially nice option in the Activity Tracker. The activity tracker offers paths, and each path kind of acts as a little bit of a tutorial or introduction to a skill or area in RuneScape. So if you want a little bit of extra hand-holding from the game, you're lost with a sandbox element, follow a path, do what it says, and go from there. Who knows, maybe you'll discover your next new favorite skill. But when in doubt, you can also always explore. Just look for icons on your minimap. Maybe you'll come across some enemies that are way too strong and kill you, and learn your lesson and go back there later. Maybe you'll come across a quest that's a lot of fun and unlocks a new area. Maybe you'll find a skill, like agility, that you really don't enjoy, and run in circles for a couple hours before giving up. Or maybe you'll find a new area, explore the wilderness for a bit, discover green dragons, and find that you really love dragon slaying, level up some combat skills, and become far stronger and richer as a result. Above all, be willing to try new things, and don't be afraid to ask a more experienced player for some advice. If you get stuck, and there's another player around, in general, you can ask for help. Occasionally, you will get that elitist asshole who just demeans you for not knowing something, but for the most part, people are friendly and willing to help, or, at worst, distracted and unresponsive because they're not paying attention, and not because of any malice. There is a lot to do, and there's a lot of things that you can do in RuneScape that you can do in many other games. But if you're looking for an area that I would personally recommend because it stands out as a great overall experience and feels very different from most of the other MMOs I've played, then I suggest questing. Questing will push you to train a bunch of other skills that are often requirements for different quests. It will take you all over the world of Jelenor. It will mix non-combat skilling with combat and expose you to some great and at times quite funny writing. So with that, I wish you the best of luck as you take your first steps into Jelenor, or if you're a returning player, take your first steps back into Jelenor. Because we all know you never truly quit RuneScape, you just take long breaks. But now, I'd like to know from you, what are your experiences in RuneScape as a new player? Either because you jumped into the game, seeing the mobile client launch, you jumped into the game after seeing this video, or you found this video after trying the game and finding yourself a little bit lost or overwhelmed. Personally, I found that I know what I like, and I like what I know, which is to say that back in the day, I did a lot of skilling, and I did a lot of PVM, and I still like skilling, and I still like PVM, so I've decided to play RuneScape 3, at least for now. But what about you? I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and if you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. A special thanks to my YouTube channel members and patrons, whose generous support keeps me from needing to accept sketchy mobile game sponsorships. 
If you want the best way to keep up with my video releases and live streams, or maybe just hang out and chat with a bunch of like-minded people, be sure to join the Discord. You can find all these links down in the description below. Thank you again, and I hope you have a great day.